Day three. Let's see if we can get this bitmap thing done. So last time we put the code in to scan the directory of the CPM file system. So now we actually go, we are actually going to need to look at the directory entries to build the bitmap. We don't actually need this for loading files, but we will need it for later. So we'll just go and do it now. So we're going to add a pointer variable in zero page that will point at the actually I'm not going to call it FCB I'm going to call it DRent. I will talk about FCBs later and this is going to point at the uh, the DR directory entry that we load from disk as part of this. So we do this here. This will give us a pointer that we can use to examine the directory entry. So A contains the offset into the sector. Directory buffer is a pointer to the directory buffer. So we want to add the two together. And write that to, uh, what did I call it, dear end? Let's make this current, dear end. So we're using current in a lot of places. So now in this code, we read the disk. This is inside bitmap here on the left. We are going to ignore a lot of this. Uh, we do need to check to see whether this is a Of if this directory entry is actually used. If it is an E5, then we know that uh, this directory entry is not in use. Okay, uh, now we have also something I did since last time is I added a macro that prints debug messages. So we can just do this. It won't disturb any of the registers. So now we can run the thing and we should see that message twice. There we go. Because there are two valid directory entries. So now that we have a valid directory entry, we then call another routine uh, to actually update the bitmap. What this will do is it'll walk through the block allocation inside the DRENT and update or clear any of the bits in the bitmap. This corresponds to set file here.
So this will go here. This is a separate This is a separate uh, routine because we're actually going to be using this elsewhere and I actually think we want this to be X. So this in the CPM80 is called set file here. So this gets the address of the DRENT, which is calling an FCB here, and that is incorrect. It's not an FCB. But I'll talk about FCBs later. Adds on 16, this gets the address of the uh, the allocation map. It then reads them one by one and they can be either one byte wide or two bytes wide depending if this is a big disk. And if the block is used it will then do the thing which in which this case is to either set or reset a bit in the bitmap. So this is where the blocks start. If we are a, we now need to check to see if we're a big disk, which yesterday we decided we were going to do with uh, by loading the high byte of blocks on disk. So that if that value is zero, we are a small disk. If it is one, we are a big disk. So if we, uh, if it is, sorry, if it's zero or not zero. So if it is not zero, otherwise, we want to load the block number let me think we want to load the block number into uh it's a 16 bit block number we want to load it into a x we have run out of registers so let's store uh this flag in zero so if it's a big disk then we want to load the low byte, increase Y, load the high byte, increase Y, and fall through to the routine that actually checks the block. And we can't do that because 
we don't have this addressing mode. So we're actually going to have to do more stuff. So we're using temp plus zero and temp plus one to store the set free flag and the current offset. So for every block, we want to, hmm. Let's not do that just yet. Okay, that should do it. Uh, do a bit of stack juggling here. Uh, we pull the low byte, stick it on the stack. Pull the high byte, put that in X, pull the low byte off the stack. Uh, we have we are very limited as to what we can do with indirections. Okay, well that compiles. Uh, we now want to check to see if the block that we've got is zero, because we know that if it's zero, it's in use. Uh, it's it's not in use. So that's in A and X. So there's not. We can't do arithmetic on those. So we're going to have to stash them, both values into zero page so we can work on them. And in fact, if we're going to do that, uh, then we might as well just Each store here takes two bytes. The push here is one byte, and this and juggling is two. Yeah, let's just do it like this. It's easier. And in fact, we can leave the Uh, the high byte in A. So we've got the high byte in A, we want to or it with the low byte. If it is zero, then continue on with the loop. This needs to be a Y, and here we want to say if the offset is 32, then we have run out of blocks and exit. Uh, so we actually want to do this. Right. So every time we hit this line here, we have a allocated block that we want to do something with. So we can put a debug statement in 
and run it, we see two blocks. That is exactly what I want. Let's actually adjust this. Te our temp is organized as two uh, byte, uh, two words. Thing is that we are going to have to stash y This should not be an RTS. This should be a jump to block loop. Yes, that only actually worked at all because our files each have one block. So here we are going to want to true, uh, calculate the bit in the bitmap which uh, this block corresponds to and either set it or clear it. So it's set file that does the work. So st bitmap is the code that actually stores the bit. Yeah, routine to get the bit from the disk space allocation map. Set bc to the block number on return. D will contain the original bit position for this block number and HL the address. So we are actually we need to uh, offset into the bitmap to find the appropriate byte. Each byte contains the bits for eight blocks. So we're going to need to end up with a pointer to the byte and which bit in that byte it is. So this will be call get bitmap location. So the first thing we want to do is to get the actual bit position. Which is very simply you just and the the low byte with seven and stash. We then are going to shift the uh, the block number right by three bits.
but we for to do this we either want to have the value in XA or the value in temp zero. We want it in temp zero because that's where shift R is going to expect it. So we're going to want to swap a lot of these. So that's going to be temp plus two. And that's going to be temp plus three. So we're now we're putting the block number in temp plus zero. And we add an extra in uh, an extra entry point to the shift i routine that does not set a and x because we know that the the value is already in temp zero where we expect it to be. And that's all we need to do. Is it? Yes, it is. So we get the bitmap location. We now want to set or clear the appropriate bit. Is this supposed to work over here? Ah, right. It's expecting CK bitmap to return whether it's allocated or not. So we're going to put this, uh, we can't put that in, we can't return that in anything other than A because we need to push and pop. Okay, so to put that in X, load A with Uh, load A with one And we want to shift the the one left to get a mask. This is going to be really painful. I think we need more primitives. So Get bitmap 
status we call get get bitmap location. We then want to shift our one. So that is in fact this code here to get a mask. And we are going to put this in a helper. So that then produces a mask. No, we don't want to do that. We actually want to use shift R. So you put that in Y. Ah, no, we don't. Um, we want to shift this bit right. I was expecting to use these, but these use temp. So we're actually going to do, going to have to write shift a right right times. And once again, these registers are wrong. I don't want to use Y for that. I want to use X for that. Because we need to put zero into um, Y so that we can read the actual byte out of the bitmap. Then we shift the byte right and exit. OK. So to set a bit,
we get the location we stick that thing in X we now need to mask off the old value So this will compute a mask. We then invert it. And it with the bitmap byte. Write it back. This will uh, this will clear the bit. Does PLA set flags? Good, it does. It sets the Z flag. So we can say uh, if it's not equal, then set bit otherwise we clear the bit. So in order to set the bit, we compute the mask based on the value in X. And then rather than anding it, we or it in are uh, not inverted as well okay well that's fairly nasty code oh just looking at this that's really cunning that's really cunning. So rather than just shifting left and right here, what it does is it rotates the byte so that all the bits are still present just with the one we want in the least significant bit uh, position. Then it can operate on the bottom bit of that value, then it shifts everything back again and writes. Now, we can do that in the 8080 because it's got 8-bit shifts, 8-bit uh, rotates. But the 6502 has 9-bit shifts. So actually doing an 8-bit rotate is harder than it looks. So I found some code here for doing 8-bit uh, rotates, which looks clean enough that I think we are actually going to put that in. So I'm going to replace these with rotates. So rotate, write, 
eight times. So two, this is rotate left, this one is rotate right. So LSR A is logic shift right. This rotate uh, uh, rotates nine bits where the rightmost bit goes into carry and the left bit ends up with a zero as a zero. So So if the carry is set, we manually set the top bit, which is kind of ugly but works. So to rotate left, then uh, we uh, do a shift left. Again, a zero will be inserted on the right and the left will go into the carry. And then we can do a ADC zero, which will add the carry onto the value, thus putting the bit that was in the carry into the low byte. So, get bitmap location. This returns the bit position in A. So this gives us the rotated block status. In order to set, we stash the rotated block status, the, the updated rotated block status. We now want to rotate left. And then we can just plonk it back into the bitmap like this. Okay. So, what we're going to do is get bitmap status that gives us the rotated uh, This, of course, will overwrite temp zero, which is our block number, so that we cannot then call set bitmap status because this is gone. because this consumes both x, because rotate R8 will, will reduce x to zero, and the block status. So I think set bitmap status is going to have to do both at once. Yep. 
It also consumes Y because we need that to index. Yeah, this kind of bit fiddling is something that 6502 is not brilliant at simply because there are so few registers. So let's push the bit position here. Uh, transfer a to x so this gets us the rotated status in a Clear the bit we care about. We now want to load this. Seems we've got this on the stack in the way. So pull the bit position, put that in X, ready to unrotate. Pull the new bit. We now want to OR it with Y, but we can't because the 6502 doesn't have that instruction. I don't really... see the, the way you're supposed to do things here is by putting the value in a um, zero page byte but I'd rather not use more, more zero page so there is something we can do and it's a bit foul but it will work so here we wish to So this value here, ah, wrong button. This value here should contain the uh, the bit that we want to put in the um, in the bitmap. We just have to get it from here to here, and the easiest way to do that is. with self-modifying code. So assuming that does what I want it to do, no it doesn't. Oh no, no, that's fine. Uh, this needs rewriting. Okay, so this will stash the bit the bit value we want directly into the operand field of this OR instruction, which is fine. And likewise, we want to get the the bit position here so that we can rotate we can unrotate this
like so. And just wonder, is there a way in which we can avoid this? Well, we can push it onto the stack, but you can only pop into A, and A is in use because it's got the actual like value. So I think this is probably the cleanest we'll do, the cleanest we can do. Okay, there is another thing which is, in fact, I have gotten the the rotate the wrong way around. Bit uh, block zero wants to go in the highest bit of the byte. So this is going to return a bit position of zero We really want it to return seven. So we kind of want to do seven minus this value. That would involve a reverse subtract and guess what another thing that 602 is not very good at. Ideally, we want to be able to say this, so 7 minus A, but we can't. There is a way. So we invert the value and add the thing we want to subtract. So our bit number here can be 0 to 7. Uh, block 0 will end up in bit 7. Block 7 will end up at bit 0. And we also have this the wrong way around. No, actually, this is right. So we want to rotate right by the bit position. Yep, OK. So, update bitmap for dear end. We have put our set free flag into X. So here, we're going to change this to update bitmap status. We are actually going to get the set free flag update bitmap status. This should then update the bitmap. So, does it work? Well, we can run it and it will do this, which is just what I was expecting. Uh, we're actually going to need to step through this or preferably dump the bitmap once we're done. or, to be honest, both. So let's break at 1903 and continue. Run. OK, we're in our code. How do we identify this piece of code? Let's go LDY16, CPY32. should be here somewhere. We don't actually have terribly much code. These roles are here. So we are in read dear entry. Here is our update bitmap for dear ent code at 1A09. Right, we're here. So the set free flag is in X, it is a one. So we store. 
uh, y is the position into the FCB, which is 16. Are we at 20? No, we're not. Uh, are we a big disk? No, we're not. Uh, memory address 4 here is pointing at the current DRENT, which is 5db. 5db. Here is our DRENT for the NOP routine. So we have one block, which is a 2, and everything else is a 0. So we fetch the block. We are here. Stash it. The high byte is 0. Increment y to the next block. Store the high byte. Check for a 0, which it won't be. A is 2. We are now here. We store y. Uh, we fetch the set free flag into A, which is a 1. We go to update bitmap status. We are here. So we poke the uh, we poke the block status into this instruction. We then try to get the bitmap location, which is here. So temp plus two, this should be well, this is block two. So A is A is one. Uh, that's just that's not right. This is wrong. This should be a zero. Okay. One A three eight we want to restart from. One A three eight. Okay, LDA six. This gives us the low block byte of two. Uh, we've ended it with seven. Invert, reverse subtract. Our value is five, which is correct. We then. Push onto the stack. Uh, we now want to shift temp zero right by three. We actually know this works, so and we can abbreviate this code a bit by using a logic shift right for the first roll. I'll deal with that later. We're here. Restore A, which is still now five, and we are here. So we store the bit position. We now want to do the rotating stuff. Yes, this has consumed the block number in temp zero. So this should return the byte in the bitmap, which uh, block 0 and 1 are used by the directory. So this should be C0. And it's not. What is the value at 6? 
Uh, oh, 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 oh. Ah, we have not added the bitmap address. So low byte of no, hang on, the bitmap's a pointer. Low byte of bitmap CLC ADC ten plus zero LDA ten plus zero LDA bitmap plus one ADC ten plus one SDA ten plus one. Okay. Uh, we are here. That was the wrong button. Where are we? That's an LDA. Oh, we're here. That's actually that's actually right. Get bitmap location. Good. So we compute the location. Shift right to get the bitmap pointer. Now we are going to add on the bitmap address. which is at 66B. So if you look at that address, there is our C0. So we're now here. So we now load the byte. There we get our C0 in A. And we rotate it. Oops. That's not very rotated. That's because we haven't asked it how much to rotate by. That's why. So we need a TAX there for the first rotate. Bit pause here is being used for the second rotate. So we're at get bitmap location. No, we're not. We're at update bitmap for DRINT. Now we're at get bitmap location. We are here, store. Get the value, and that did not rotate. That crashed. Okay, so, 3D reset. Continue. Doesn't reset very reliably. Okay, 1B3D, we are at rotate R8. And that needs to be a exit. No, it doesn't. It 
does need to be one of these, but I forgot to put a label in. Here, here we are in rotate R8. Uh, X is 6 to rotate. Wasn't it 5 last time? That's because we just inked it. So we break at 1B49 and continue. We're now exiting from here. Here is our rotated value. That is uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, which is exactly what we want. So we're here. We mask off the bit we care about. This won't change because it's not set. We OR in the new bit. See this has we've poked a one into the operand field here, giving us a seven. We now want to rotate left, giving us E zero. And then we are going to store it back in the bitmap. Done. So that was the first file. If we go again we should hit the second file. Here we are in the rotate, end of the rotate. Here's the rotated value, which you can see contains uh, the bit that we set last time. So this will set another bit, making it an F. So the first four blocks of the file system are in use, and we stash it back and then we hold. Good, that works. We have now correctly generated the bitmap. So we have actually now executed all the way to here. So now we need to talk about actually Now we need to talk about FCBs. FCBs are how CPM uh, manages files. POSIX and most operating systems that people are used to these days use file handles. You open a file, it will allocate you a new file handle, the data for which is stored in the kernel, and you just get back an index to the file handle which is yours. CPM doesn't work like that. Instead, CPM, here we go, makes you, the user application, track a structure. And this is actually the dear end, which is slightly different, but, and the structure lives in application space and that contains all the information CPM needs to manage the file. Uh, the advantage of this is it's much easier to do memory management because it's all statically allocated by the application and things like uh, you don't need to close files if you don't have data that needs flushing you just discard the structure because there is no cleanup that needs doing so an FCB actually looks like a DRENT the 32 bytes of directory information there are some of these fields are used for something else when they're in memory than when they are on disk and there's another three bytes stuck on the end which is used for random access actually I know where to find this if we go to the BDOS call for opening a file because that's what we're going to have to do next the FCB is a 36 byte structure here it is. So you can see this looks almost identical. Uh, in fact, the we have uh, these four bytes on the end. CR is the current record, which uh, tells you which record you're looking at within an extent. 
and these three fields here they're marked as reserved which is not terribly helpful but they're used to track which extent you're in oh and dr here contains the drive number not the user number so here in our warm start code what we want to do is to load the ctp to do this we need an fcb that we're using to uh, reference the ccp the command processor so this is going to be a structure we seem to have already decided that our code is mutable so it's on drive a always Four, five, six, seven, eight. CCP dot sys. Uh, these four fields need to be zero on entry. We then have these fields are, this is where the directory allocation lives. Uh, this is not something the user should care about. And uh, the current record is zero. And we don't actually need to allocate space for these three because these are only used by the random access functions. So so we want to open the file. like that. So now we kind of want to write this. And this is going to be one of our major entry points. This returns an error code. Okay, so let's just put a halt here and a debug line. So now we should be able to run it. There we go. We are trying to open the CCP. So what is this actually going to do? Well, the first thing we want to do because we're going to be accessing the CCB, the an FCB, we want a variable for that. So figure out what the BDOS implementation here is going to calling this. This is the CCP. Uh, I think open it was the one. It's looking 
for the jump table that's the that's the actual BDOS entry point which should be somewhere around here it is open fill is called so this is not actually complicated uh, this needs to make sure that the FCB is initialized it selects the disk described in the FCB and then it jumps to the internal open routine so we uh, Clear the S2 byte. S2 is 14. Like so. You can either have a drive specifier in here in the first byte or zero. This is really irritating because this is a different drive numbering scheme than, than is used actually in the rest of CPM because we have drive one being A rather than drive zero, but that's what it is. So so we want to load the get the drive byte if it is uh, if it is zero then we actually want to get the the drive here uh, and select the drive This is more complicated than I thought it would be. Okay, we're not... Yes, we need to set the active drive and then select it. And we only do that if it's a different drive. Yeah. 
This is more complicated than it ought to be, to be honest. I think it's assuming that if the drive is zero, then you get the currently selected one. I'm not sure I like that terribly much. I think it should just be this. So that if it's not zero, then we want to decrement it If it's not zero, then this means the user has specified a drive number. So we decrement uh, just thinking the least bad way to do this. We want to decrement it and stash it in active drive. that. Okay, so we should now have arrived here with a selected drive and a valid FCB. Okay, we're here. So in CPM80, open it here is the, is the routine that does all the work. And there's actually not very much of it because it, all the work has mostly been done elsewhere. So what it actually does is it scans the entire directory using find first here, looking for a dirent with the matching file name and a extent counter of zero. This means that it's the first uh, the first uh, directory entry of the file. Then it just copies the directory entry into the user FCB, makes a few, a few adjustments, and that's it. That's all that you need. So we need find first. Find first is a primitive that's used absolutely everywhere. That was rename, this was changing attributes, opening a file, closing a file, 
uh, find a empty space in the directory, uh, get the next extent of a file, uh, random access stuff, Uh, this is the actual directory scanning stuff that is exposed to the user and so on. Uh, it um, you tell it how many significant bytes of the FCB you want it to check for. So you can give it 11 for just the file name, 14 for the, uh, sorry, hang on, we start again from the beginning actually. We, you give it 12 if you want to scan for a file in a particular user because this first byte here actually will actually get replaced with the user number you're looking for. It's only a drive when it's in user space. Uh, or you can give it 15 to indicate that you want one specific extent. Or you give it just one to indicate that you're looking for an empty space. So what this actually does is it just uh, resets the file position that we've done before. We did that when logging in the drive somewhere. Here. And then it does lots of reading directory entries. So, so find next looks for the next file and it's going to be a loop where we uh, look f we look at each directory in turn If we reach the end stop, in fact, if we reach here, then we haven't found whatever we were asked to find. And then there's all the comparison stuff. Wow, there's a lot of this. And you can search for wildcards. So we want to actually want some variables for storage here. So we're going to have uh, so this is the count of characters that we want. Actually, I'm just wondering, do we need to, uh, when preparing the FCB, do we also need to replace the drive byte with the current user number. I think we do. So 
this was open file. Clear S2 clears the... Yeah, that's not complicated. Uh, it's used to it's used as a flag bit for things like you know is the file modified if so then when the the FCB gets closed we need to flush the FCB out into the directory So here is open it. So find first must be modifying the FCB if necessary. Character count, file name to match. It's in params. I'm not quite sure what it's doing here. What is params? DE parameters here on entry. Okay, this is this is the pointer to the FCB then. So that is fetching the FCB pointer that the user supplied and stashing it in save FCB. Clear initial file position, home the drive, and then we start fetching directory entries. So, read directory entry, check to see if we're at the end branch. So here, here we actually say that we want to re we want to bytes of FCB is find first. Right, that does actually work up to this point. So we've read a directory entry. We now need to match it to see whether it's something we care about. Uh, so the first thing is to check for a empty directory entry So here we jump to find next one if the uh, DE is the pointer to the dear end. If it's E5 we go here. That doesn't make a lot of sense. I would have thought that would be that should be a not 
z. That is, if we want to continue with the match only if it's not a e5. So yeah, I don't know how that works. It could be a typo. Actually, let's take a look at the other one. This is the same file, but in uh, 8080 machine code. Yeah, these are actually the same comments, so that's not helping. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. This isn't loading from current DRNT. This is loading from current FCB. So as you see, it's loading save FCB into HL, putting it in DE, and then loading that. It wants to know whether the user has asked to match for deleted entries. Uh, and then it's going to be using this. Yeah, if if the user has asked for deleted files, it then will skip this check here, which seems to be checking for whether we've reached the end of the directory or not. Uh, it it tracks how many files are in a directory so that it doesn't have to load the entire directory every time you want to do something. Yeah. Uh, We haven't done that. The the directory logon stuff, it will scan the directory and uh, keep track of the last uh, file directory entry in the directory uh, and it's stored in scratch one. We haven't done that at all so we have to get here where we're actually comparing the file names. So there's a bunch of setup which is actually easier for us as we don't need to set registers because you've got everything we need in zero page. So we load the number of significant bytes. So we now want to get a file name from the F, uh, a character from the FCB. I'm sorry, that should be a Y. And in fact, that'll be one less. So we're going to we actually start at the right hand end of the DRENT. That's what the code here is doing. Load the number of No it doesn't. No it doesn't, it counts up. Okay. So we are actually going to do that like this. So we load a byte from the FCB. If it's a question mark We we don't compare this byte.
also we this is clunky code I have to say we also don't care about byte 13 which is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 8 9 10 11 12 13 that's s1 uh, that's on on disk that's uh, the unused byte uh, if it's the if we're on byte 12 the extent byte Otherwise, we compare the two characters by subtracting them. If they are not the same, then we give up. And we go right back to the top to find next. So if the characters are the same, then we go to find next four, which is here. Uh, compare with, can we do CPY? with an absolute address. Yes, we can. If uh, if we have not reached the end of the string, go back to the comparison loop. Otherwise, so uh, looking at how this is done. Uh, so what this will actually do is uh, return you a value 0, 1, 2 or 3 telling you which directory entry in the directory buffer your matching DRNT is. Uh, we already have our directory, our current DRNT pointing at the right place so all we need to do is just stop. No more files wants to return an error.
very simple. Oh, uh, and we also want to reset the directory position counter. So there's one thing we haven't done, which is we need to compare extents. And we're actually going to do this Okay, where's the extent comparison code? Here. It's using a routine called Samext. Which is used in one place. So because a directory entry can contain either one or two extents, we need to do some special stuff here. So this gives us the extent mask. We now want to and both the extent in the directory entry and the extent in the FCB and check to see if they are the same. Um. Well, anding the the FCB uh, extent is easy. Of course, we can't just compare it to the the one in um, the dear end. Uh, let me just take a quick look here. What does this bit instruction do? Nothing useful. So I think we actually need storage. Because in order to do a comparison, we have to have one value in A and the other value in memory somewhere. Okay, so pull the mask and with current dearent comma y compare with the value that we stored earlier. Extent mask in the extent byte 
only the uh, the bottom five bits are valid. So if the result is zero, they are the same. Otherwise, they are not the same. And we go around again. Okay. We are looking for four JSRs in a row. That's our FCB, which is here. It's not, it's here. Here are our four JSRs in a row. So this STA at 199F is find first. So we put our breakpoint there. Okay. Uh, we are comparing 15 bytes. So we store that home the drive, reset the directory position. Now we're in the find next loop. Read a directory entry. Check to see if there are, if we've reached the end of the directory. We haven't. Did the user ask for deleted files? Well, that should be a CMP. So that's not going to help. Okay. The user did not ask to see deleted files. Uh, in fact, let's just one nine three three is, and that's the DRENT for ccp.sys. So. We are now comparing the file names between the, uh, the value in the DRENT and the value in the FCB. So load a byte out of the FCB. So that's the first byte, which is the user. I still don't know how the FCB drive gets reset, to be honest. Uh, is it a wild card? It's not a wild card. Is it byte 13? It's not byte 13. Is it byte 12? It is not byte 12, so we go up to the character comparison stuff. So if I look at 4, that's 05 dB. Here is the DRENT we just read. So we're going to be comparing 0 and zero. Giving us zero. Uh, mask off the top bit. That's top bits of the file name are used to store uh, file attributes. They are the same. So increment. Have we reached the end of the string? No, we have not. So we go around again. 
So we should now be comparing a N for NOP and a C for CCP. So this should fail. Uh, check for a wildcard, same characters, blah, blah, blah. That gives us F5. Mask. That is not the same. So we give up and go back up to find next. So we read the next directory entry. Does the user want to see deleted files? Again, compare file names again. Yes, I feel reasonably confident that this is going to go round until we halt. So we hit the breakpoint here. We should have failed to find a file because we don't have a ccp.sys. So if there is uh, if the carry is set, this means that we fail to find something we wish to exit. Right. That wasn't quite what I was expecting, I have to say. So what I was hoping was that uh, this would error out, this would exit with the carry set. We would hit exit here and return and we would get this message rather than this message. The question is of course why? Interesting. I am not sure that my debug string has worked. Should be annoying. I think this is failing somehow. Um, let me take a moment and fix it. Okay, I have it working. Everything was fine. I just had incorrectly set the stack pointer, and as a result, my debug routine here was uh, falling off the top of the stack and you know, bad things were happening. Okay, so we actually want to put a proper error routine in here 
to say that uh, the, you know, it couldn't find the CCP, but we're not going to do that now. Okay, so we now want to create our CCP. So we create a .s file for it. Uh, we add this to the make file. Okay. Um, actually, we want to put this in the file system. Okay, so that has now created a ccp.sys that has gone into the CPM file system. So we can now see that there are three directory entries of which ccp.sys is one at uh, block four. Uh, there is in fact no ccp data, so there's like two FFs for the relocation table both of which are empty, and no relocation header, which is quite wrong. So I'll just fix that. Uh, that's not, here is our not protein source CCP. And this is, this is a com header. So in fact, that will do just fine. Okay, that builds. So now, when we run our program, we should get a different message. Yes. Good. What that means is that we've iterated through the directory until we have found a, uh, a dirent with a matching file name and we then have some stuff that we haven't done yet to actually open the file. When I say open the file, I mean copy the DRNT into the, the FCB. So we found the first one. Uh, what is this doing? Right, we want to fetch the extent byte out of the user FCB because it doesn't necessarily match the one on disk. So that is going to be extent byte is 15, 14, 13, 12. Stash. We are now going to copy the DRNT to the FCB. So 31 bytes, there's a loop, 
you know how loops work. So this copies all the allocation data. Also, I realize that our extent comparison is, I believe our extent comparison is incorrect. because I think we should be checking for extents that are less than the one the user asked for, because you're allowed to fetch extents that don't exist on disk yet. Anyway, we copy the derent. We want to set bit 7 of S2 to indicate that the uh, directory is unmodified. So S2 is 14. Get the extent byte back again. Uh, is this correct? Extent byte within the user FCB. Okay, this is the address of the FCB, and because we have copied the two, uh, the FCB is now the same as the derent. So this is to uh, CPM tracks the length of files in records, not in bytes. So that if the directory derent match, so if the directory extent matches the user extent, then we are looking at the last extent of the file. Therefore, we use the record count in the file because it's partially full. If it is smaller, then we're in the middle of the file, so we use a maximum record count size. If it is larger, then we are after the end of the file, and we use zero because there are no records here.
uh, if the carry is set, this means the user byte is bigger than the dirint byte. So the user extent is smaller, therefore the record count is going to be uh, one to eight. and we want to set the record count which is this one current record uh, hang on do we want to do that current record within extent is that the right one or do you want to set the other parameter 15 right no that's a different one we want to set this one CLC to indicate it works and we're done. Okay. Let's try this. Debugger. So we are at the top of the file. Go through the setup code. We're now in exit, reset the disk, open the CCP, carry is not set. So if we look, so it, it thinks it succeeded. So let's look at our CCP, which is in 194, uh, our FCB, which is in 1945, whoops, 1945. We see, yes, look, there's an allocation. We have successfully opened a file on our CPM file system. So the next thing we're going to do is to actually read the CCP into memory, relocate it, and run it. But we're going to do that next time. So, until then.